Hello, it's Evil Jason. I've got this game I want to kill you in. It's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Don't even bother saying no. I'm taking the teleporter and I'll be there in about five seconds. Start getting it set up. Don't make me mad, Jason. All right, see ya, brother. Well, don't just sit there, explain the rules. And you better do a good job or you know what's gonna happen to you. So this is the starting setup for the first scenario. The four turtles can start in any of these starting positions. The four turtles are always used. Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael. They all get a starting amount of focus, which are these tokens here. They can be used for re-rolls. They also have a skill. Each of the scenarios will give you a modifier on that skill. So for example, Raphael's skill is 2. The scenario has a modifier of minus 1. He would get to select one special move from his stack of 5 or 6 cards. He can pick one to bring with him. In this case, I brought a Hurl Psy. I cost 2 dice symbols of this, and then I would get to make an attack with a range 3 attack. Two for Michelangelo, two for Leonardo, and two for Donatello. You'll notice the board has these different background spaces. The rules for all of these different spaces are right here on these cards, similar to Memoir 44. For example, these blue spaces right here mean that it's elevated terrain. So these two turtles are essentially up on a roof, looking down. I think if this is elevated terrain, then the board should be three-dimensional, no? I mean, way to cheap out, it's just flat. That's a completely unrealistic thing to expect from this game. Let me just carry on with the explanation, all right? These are fire escapes. They create adjacency between low terrain and elevated terrain. These are piles of garbage. They can let you jump off a building and land safely in the pile of garbage. Yellow spaces always cost two movement points to move into. These orange spaces are unstable terrain. It has a rail here and lets the turtles perform a rail slide on those spaces. <coughs> now the villain, who Evil J is going to be controlling, has a card similar to the turtles that represents each of the figures that the scenario allows them to use. They both have three move, one attack, two defend, and 99 evil. The villain player gets a deck of cards, which is their action dice, essentially. The turtles roll dice and use dice symbols to act, the villain plays cards and use the symbols on the card to activate their people. The scenario will tell you which color of cards to use. In this case, you use the green, the red, and the blue cards. There's four cards of each color for the thug brawlers and the thug gunners. And you also include the regroup card, which is essentially shuffle all your cards back into shuffle the discard pile and the deck together to form a new deck. It also lets you gain a focus. Generally, the villain gets to spawn new bad guys at the end of every round, but that rule isn't applied on the first scenario. For the turtles to win, they have to defeat eight of these villain bad guys. For the villains to run, they have to get three of their villains in either this line or this line of the board. Now, in addition to everything I just explained, the turtles each have their own special move. It's unique to each of that turtle and it's always in effect. For example, Raphael's special move is he gets six dice to roll instead of three, but he doesn't get to borrow dice from other turtles. I'll explain that in just a second. 
Michelangelo, he's nimble. Once per turn, he can move one space for free, ignoring terrain and breakaway rules. Breakaway is if you're moving away from bad guys, it costs you an extra point per bad guy you're moving away from. Or a good guy if you're a bad guy running away. Etc. Etc. So, round always starts off with the turtles rolling their action dice. It's essentially a very streamlined game. On a turtle's turn, they use these little sewer lids and they mark off the dice as they use them. Shells are passive. They provide an extra defense dice whenever you're making rolls in addition to your base defense. Shurikens are, lets you add one to an attack, a ranged attack. These skateboards, for each skateboard you spend, you can move your move in spaces. Swords are melee attack, double swords are melee attack. These little chi symbols give you a focus up to your maximum and they let you spin the dice to any symbol you want. Once the dice are rolled, the turtles arrange them however they wish. The one in the middle doesn't matter, but the ones you put on the outside lets the turtle next to you share that. For example, if Michelangelo wanted to do a melee attack, he can borrow that. If he wanted to do another movement, even though he's got tons, he can do that. So, dice are rolled and we're ready to begin. Alright, I can choose which turtle I want to activate. So, I am going to go with Michelangelo. He's got lots of movement here. If you have a double symbol, you can't break up the symbol. So, for example, this double skateboard symbol, I can move eight with it. If I stop to attack, I'll lose the balance of my movement. So I'm going to go one, two. You cannot move through people. I'm going to go three, four, because it's a yellow space. It costs two to move into. I'm going to use my special ability that gives me a free move every round. I still have four movement left. One, two, three, four. I am going to use Leonardo's sword over here to do an attack. I'm using one symbol, I could use more if I had it, to add to my attack of one to roll two dice for an attack on a brawler. Two hits. Now the brawler has a defense of two. Evil J could have more depending on the amount of villain cards that are in play, but there's none in play on the first round. So Evil J is going to roll two dice. One shield and one hit. So he's going to take one damage. These guys have a health of three. So we take one of these pizza slices. We put it on his base. Now Michelangelo wants to watch out for everybody running straight back to this end of the board. So he's going to use a skateboard, a single skateboard. He's going to go one. That is unstable terrain, the orange bordered square. Figures may move through unstable terrain but cannot end a move action in it. If a figure would be forced to end its movement in unstable terrain, that figure stops just short of the terrain. Now there is a terrain move called Grind Rail, so I could do that for three skateboards, but I'm not. I'm just going to move through. So one, two, three, four. He's going to hang back in the road and try and deal with any of these goons that are running behind him. He's not going to bother using his other skateboard, so his turn is done. He will move his tokens. Your turn, Evil J. Michelangelo, run in the back. I'm not afraid of Michelangelo. He's all by himself. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play me Thug Brawler card. Get him. It says times two, so I can activate two of them. You can't activate two of the same figures during the same phase. 
these guys give me a double skateboard and a single katana. So I'm going to use this double skateboard with their move of three is going to let me go six bases. One, two to move into a slow space in orange. So he jumps down on the stairs. One, two, three, four, five, Michelangelo, six. Second fella, he's going to run. One, two, three, four, five, Michelangelo, six. That's me first card. My second card is going to be a Thug Brawler. He's got a movement of three. I wish he could move further, but he can't. He's going to go. One, two, three. That's it. He's running right there. I've got to get three guys either this back row or that back row. So that's be two cards played. I'm going to draw two. All right. Activate your next Ninja Turtle, Jason. Evil Jason. The next turtle I'm going to use is with Raphael. I'm going to take one of these stop sign tokens and put it on his card to show that he's activated after this. So Raph, he doesn't get to share his dice. That's his special ability, but he gets six of them. So I like it. He's got lots of shirkins going on here. Those gunners of yours only have one hit. So I could use both of my shirkin dice to uh, really get a big attack, but I'm going to use this double symbol. Now double symbols can't be broken up. So uh, I'm going to roll two. One dice for each shuriken. And his attack is two, so four dice. One, two, three hits. Now... Raph's starting focus is three. He hasn't used any yet. So I'm going to use a focus so that I can re-roll. I like that focusing can let you mitigate bad dice rolls. All right, so spending a focus, re-rolling the two shells. That is five hits. They have a defensive two, one hit point. There's no way you can save that, so this guy is dead. That's one of my eight I need to kill. It's worth pointing out that the further you go past two spaces, the weaker that ranged attack gets. So if you were four spaces away, I would have lost two successes on that, but it was a good hit nonetheless. All right, he's going to throw another shuriken at this guy right here. He's uh, one, two spaces away. So this time I'm only going to get... Three dice. One, two, three. The most you can roll is two successes, which means he is dead. How do you like them apples, Evil Jason? So he's got a katana left he can use, a shield which just adds to his defense when it's time to defend, or... Some skateboard. So I am going to use a skateboard, which lets him move three spaces. He's going to go one, two. Then he's going to use a katana, which will give him three dice. One for the katana and two for his actual attack. One, two, three. You don't have any cards with a defense bonus, so even if you roll two... Sh Two shells, he's still going to take a wound, and that is going to kill him. Raph is just a wrecking machine. Alright, he's got a skateboard left he can use if he wants to. He's next to a bad guy, it'll cost him an extra space to move away. So I think he is 
going to jump up into the fray and make it harder for you to move away. And that's Raph's turn. He's done. Fael. Who does he think he is? All right. Well. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, I'm going to use a thug brawler. One skateboard. One katana. Skateboard will give me three. I can move one of the brawlers. One, two, three. That's one home. And I'm going to play another thug brawler. Yeah. One, two, three. You shouldn't have ignored him, Jason. Pride is a sin, using Raphael. Who do you think you are, just running up to my gang and attacking him like that? Michelangelo did nothing back there. You ran back with Michelangelo to stop the exact thing I just did to you. <laughs> All right. Well, that's my two cards. I guess my turn's already done. We'll call that a successful turn, won't we? All right, it's the next turtle's turn. I am going to activate Donatello. Donatello's coming up. He's got two wounds on him. He's smart. At the start of each round, Donnie may either regain one focus or give one of his focus to another hero of his choice. Not to exceed that hero's maximum focus. Well, it's not the beginning of the round. First thing I'm going to use is... Uh... Oh, he's got no move actions. Oh, wish I planned this a little bit better. I guess I, I'm going to borrow a double shuriken symbol from uh, Leonardo Raphael over here. So he's going to make an attack two plus his attack of one is three dice. He's going to attack this guy. He's three spaces away, so I'm going to lose one success because uh, these get weaker with range. Three hits, minus one is two. I'm looking over at you, Evil J, and uh, you've got no defense for a gunman, so you've got to roll two no blocks. Do you want to use a focus to block one of your guys? No? Okay. This gunner is gone. So, four for me, two for you. Um, he's got nothing else he can do. I'm out of range. I have no skateboards to move, so Donatello's turn is done. I will throw a stop sign on there. Okay. Your turn, Evil Jason. Alright, I'm going to play one face down. Now, if I do that, it lets me activate any one figure doing any one of the symbols. So I'm going to do a move action. I'm going to move this guy one, two, three. Next, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to play one. I'm going to play a gunner. <clears throat> Two skateboards and a shuriken. So this guy here, it's going to go one, two to move away from uh, that space next to Raphael. Three, four. Five, six. That's as far as that guy can go. Now, climb action. Anyone can climb a building for two skateboards. So this gunner right here. Oh, I don't have another gunner. They're all dead. My mistake. All right, I can use my one attack on Donatello. One shuriken plus my attack of one, two dice on Donatello. One hit. All right, you're going to roll one, two, two turtle shells plus your defense is four. So you're rolling six dice. All right, roll defense. Three successes. All right, Donatello's good. All right. Back to you, you've got one more turtle left. And then my final turn. All right, so my only turtle left is Leonardo. One skateboard, one I can borrow, so I can move up to six spaces with him. 
All right, I'm gonna go one, two. I'm jumping down into a trash. Three, four, moving into a yellow space. Five. And I'm going to attack that uh, brawler right there. I'm gonna use one, two, three. I'm gonna borrow Donatello's sword symbol four. I'm gonna roll five dice. On that gunner. Five hits. Uh, your brawler is, uh, you've got two, four, Four shields up, plus your defensive two, so you can roll six dice to block the five hits. Four, not bad, but this guy is dead. Oh wait, they take three wounds. So uh, you're blocking one, two, three. Oh, are you gonna use a focus to reroll those hits? Okay. Three blocks, so uh, you're taking two wounds. I've used my skateboards for movement as well, so Leonardo's turn is done. That's the last one, so you get one final turn. All right, so I've got me a hand of five cards. So badly. Oh, these two will go away. So badly need a brawler card, but I don't have one. Ah, all gunners. Ah, I think I can do it anyway. Thug gunner. I can activate two. Of, I've got one left. Two skateboards gives me six move. One, two, three. Two to move into a yellow space. One to move away from a turtle. Four, five. Getting my third one out. I win. Yeah! You know what's gonna happen to you now? Hey, don't worry guys. Actually, Evil Jason and me are the same person. I'm not sure if uh, you saw past the cutting edge uh, special effects we used to uh, have me play both characters, but I'm okay. I'm not gonna suffer any uh, serious consequences like Evil J has threatened. Let me talk a bit about Ninja Turtles. I, I, did, I did this video because I wanted to give you guys a feel for how the game plays. This is the first scenario, and even though it plays quick, like this can be over in 10-15 minutes, it is still a really well-balanced scenario. I've played this exact one about four or five times. It's always fun. I'm always trying different moves. There's, a, there's an issue with like elevated buildings being around in blue, right? So if I've got a turtle around the corner... And a guy right here, technically he's got line of sight, even though the turtle is uh, thematically wouldn't be behind there. This could have bugged me. I could have gone all the, either way on it. But the way I look at it is the game's in motion. He's technically on this spot, but I look at it as him like peeking around the corner and the gunner's taking a shot at him, that sort of thing. And really these were just dumbed down this way just to keep the game flowing and simple and I'm glad they, they did. I don't think it's gonna do too much to imbalance if you wanted to house rule that a guy at the back end of the building is not gonna have line of sight with a guy that's um, at the bottom of a building. Right, right adjacent to it, right? Like, does this bullet go up and over to the roof like that? Zombie side, the very first one, I could not handle the rule where you fire into a zone and you automatically shoot your buddies first. I hated it and I house rule it right away. The house rule I made up is exactly what they ended up using in Zombie Side Black Plague. So I feel a little bit justified in that regards. But this, I don't mind the line of sight that the only thing that blocks it is the 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 black line thing, or I think there's fog or steam that can block line of sight anyway. But let's just get to the game. I think it plays great. All of these games, like the others and Conan and Doom, Imperial Assault, I think these one versus many games play the best for me. One versus one. Bad guys versus good guys. This game is 
is great with one player playing as the Turtles. It also adds a little bit of uh, cooperation when you are playing with more than one player because you've got to you've got to plan where you're going to put your dice. You got to tell people what you're planning, so hopefully they can lend you a skateboard, lend this guy a shirk. And I haven't played more than two players. Definitely excited to give it a try though. The game plays quick. We're talking 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour tops. For any of the scenarios I've played, I've played half a dozen of them. There's this whole deck of cards each turtle has, and they can pick these cool special abilities before everyone. Like Leonardo can, uh, you know, jump in the air and attack a bunch of people on the way down. Donatello can stand in the middle of a gang, spin around with his staff and attack everyone. I love that you can jump off a roof and land in, into the trash and not take damage. I love that you can jump off a roof and roll for damage if, you, if you're not landing in trash. I didn't expect much out of this game. Like IDW, they've never even raised my eyebrows until this year. And I didn't kickstart this. My brother did, and right away I wrote it off. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be like Ghostbusters or any of those other IPs that are just there to let's just get it out and sell it to fans of the property. This game was a passion project. You can feel that when you play. So it's a huge thumbs up. If I had have played this before I did my top 10 of the year, it probably would have been there uh, bumping Hitsy Road out. I like it that much. I love these one versus many thematic miniature games. So I'm a, I'm a sucker for these kind of games to begin with. And this one delivered on all the goods. The miniatures aren't the best quality. They're like a 6 out of 10. I'm still having fun painting them. They're not too bad. The scale's a little wonky on some. My brother's got the Kickstarter. And the April O'Neil towers over everybody else. And that just looks weird. The components are great. Like, I like the artwork. Nothing wrong with the cards. The designer on Board Game Geek answering questions himself, which I always love to see that. There's some radas out. There was a couple little uh, glitches from the, the Kickstarter, but anybody savvy to the BGG community is already aware of everything. Like, for example, these uh, these uh, orange spaces here are supposed to have an, ow an arrow on them showing which direction you slide. They forgot to put print them, so... And they actually don't tell you which direction they are, but if you look, you can tell it's going downhill that way, so naturally the arrow would go there. But anyways, I'm rambling too long. Love the game. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later.